that was a cool intro video. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for being here. How are you yeah, doing? Thanks today? for joining us. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me. How are y'all doing today? Bulldog Burger is that is we didn't go there behind the agency. I don't, know. Well, no. I don't think so. Behind the agency before, but I don't know if you guys went there. Yeah, no, I got you. So, well, dude, how was AEP for you? It was good, man. It was a uh, a little different than last AEP. I'm sure. I mean, a lot of people can agree with that. Just with the clients being pressured and you know yeah. contacted a ton by call centers and you know crazy things going on with this pandemic that we're having it was a little bit different but we got some things done it was it was a good ap overall yeah, yeah there was a, we were talking to benji earlier it was such a tremendous amount of pakistani call centers generating live transfers i hope that by next ap they can do something about that without screwing it up for everybody else typically they screw it up for everybody else when they do anything I get harder on everybody. Yeah, Justin, I saw your your video of them calling your cell phone. They were calling my office. Really? We would answer. We would, and I would just mess around. And Go Health would call the office phone, and yeah. we would have some fun with them for about an hour or so, yeah. uh, giving them the John Smith Medicare card. But yeah, it was, how, it was how much? Good. How much money we you think we wasted on? telling agents to do that type of stuff, right? Like I know Justin was doing it every day, at least one once a day he would answer one of the calls and put them on there for 10, yeah. 15 minutes. For me, it was a good, uh, it was a good way to spend a little time doing something that, uh, you know, broke the, broke the monotony of, of, you know, Medicare sales. The grind. Yeah. Doing, so. <laughs> right. Right. It worked out. It worked out. But so, uh, well, I saw, I mean, I did see some of y'all's numbers, um, you know, that were posted around earlier and you guys apparently um, did really well. So good job. And uh, really wanted to talk to you because um, you, you're, how long have you been doing this, Ryan? You're, I mean, you're pretty new to it and already having some great success. Yeah, so I got into the, I guess, insurance industry as a whole in 2015. I went to a private business school in a small town in Florida, even smaller than I'm at now in Lakeland. And getting a bachelor's, they said, okay, you need a paid internship. So... I had a buddy of mine, his roommate at the time, said, hey, my mom is, you know, huge in Aflac. We can do that. We can get our insurance license and sell supplemental benefits. And at the time, I had no idea what he was talking about. Yeah. Right? I knew the duck and I knew that they sponsored some things. But other than that, no idea. Um, so we went and studied and, you know, him and I would stay up for, you know, nights at a time and study this insurance material that was all Chinese to me. Um passed the test on my third time in the summer of 2015 and then we got to cold door knocking businesses now we would just pull a business list show up try to get past the gatekeeper set some meetings by the time we actually got meetings set up we had to go back to school right so i'm like insurance sucks dude I'm like, by the time you get <laughs> by the time you get clients if people want to talk to you you know something comes up so i kind of let it live for a year and a half, two years and graduated my bachelor's, went back for my master's and uh, got linked up with a kid that I went to high school with. Um, and he was selling mortgage protection at the time. Um, so I went with him and started buying $60 MP leads on a 75% contract and it just wasn't working. Yeah. Right. And at that time, it, mortgage protection wasn't working. And then your family bank came out and they said, okay, hey, we're going to spend a ton of money, go to this training, you know, do your family bank for a little bit and try to make some money there. That didn't work. We tried final expense. We got social security license with NSSA and just nothing really worked. So I actually fell out of the industry for two years or so while getting my master's. And I went back and got a job with a home security company and I was a regional manager here for Florida um got back into the industry doing final expense with ifg and i've only been in the medicare space since august of 2020. okay well no looking back then medicare all the way absolutely yeah no turning back well good so i mean you, you, the mortgage protection and final expense i i kind of look at it as like a big feeder for our industry for agents right now but um, a lot of the quality ones graduate on to Medicare or, or, or PNC. I mean, I'm not knocking PNC because the concept is uh, to chase, in my opinion, residual income. Because if you're just taking chasing uh, big commissions, you could just get into real estate and do less transactions and make the same amount of money. 
So with your with your Medicare business, Ryan, are are you aimed at creating like a, a retail shop or a call center style? What are you focused on? Yeah. So back in August, I made um I was I was doing really well on the final expense. I was doing self marketing, just selling over the phone from I have a home office, just selling from the house over the phone. Um, IFG was doing like a Medicare training in Tampa. So I went over there and met with Zach McKenzie and kind of explained the hamster wheel of life insurance, right? Hey, you can sell a ton, you know, during the year, but come January, you're right back where you started. So started to think about Medicare and um, went face to face, sold my first AEP. But come January of this year, we opened up a brick and mortar in Lakeland, Florida, where kind of where all my you know, efforts have gone throughout the year. So more leaning towards, we have a field brokerage of a few agents that we support that, you know, do their own thing being brokers, but we also have an LOA brick and mortar here in Lakeland that has done pretty well throughout 2021. So we'll hit that one year mark come January. Awesome. Perfect. Man. Well, Medicare, you know, from, from your, the difference between some of the, the spots you're doing, you're in final expense, right? And I know you were doing some lead generation online for final expense and having some luck. Are you still finding success with social media and Medicare? What's and what's the difference like when you look at, you know, uh, creating that for final expense versus Medicare? Have you seen a huge uh, difference in in response rate or, or how they're responding to those types of advertisements or? Yeah, actually, man. So funny you say it. So I was just tired of paying 64. 60 to 65 dollars a lead for mortgage protection or final expense and i took about 30 grand and a few months of my time to learn how to do the lead gen right so facebook it worked fine we averaged you know a certain dollar lead cost and i just sold those but just kind of flipped that over into medicare and kind of found out what was the pain points of these medicare beneficiaries and advertised towards that but it's been about the same. I mean, every piece of my LOA business here at the office, including my own for the last 15 months have only been off of Facebook ads. I mean, we haven't dropped any mail. I've done some seminars to some T65 stuff, um, but every application that's come out of this office has been predominantly Facebook ads. So we haven't really skipped a beat in it. It's what worked in final expense. You, you flip the ad copy a little bit and change the verbiage and it, it works in Medicare also. Yeah. Are you guys staying uh, really local or are you kind of like branching out and going multiple state? What's your, your goal there? So before we grew a ton and had, you know, a good bit of employees, which we have nine now, um, when we, it was just myself and, and two other LOA employees. We were local, which was just Polk County, which if y'all aren't familiar, Polk County is in the center of Florida between Tampa and Orlando. It's massive, right? Everybody moves here. It's, it's, there's, a ton of folks over 65 so we didn't have a small pool to pull from mm -hmm. but as we added and grew a little bit you know eight nine ten employees at one time we had to expand um so right now it's you know we do have some agents in the field but predominantly we just sell people over the phone and help them over the phone and we're running the entire state of florida as well as some other states so kind of drowned out you know our marketing efforts in the county and, and locally um, so we're in some other states, but we still do some, you know, hyper focused local stuff. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So we're we're similar. We we try to focus, you know, hyper local, but um, as we're branching out and exploring other opportunities, it's just different developing lead flow in uh, multiple areas. And also when we're calling people locally, it seems like even though you're not you're just, you're still doing things telephonically, they don't feel like you're a call center. So the trust is a little bit easier to get um, when you're not super far away. Um, so I think a lot of times people come into the industry and they're being told like, oh, you got to go get 15 state licenses and you got to get data all over the place to start cold calling. Going to debt, just buying license. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just not a big you know fan of it. And I mean, now we do, and we're, we're like 45 you know, state licenses, but um, you know, and we'll probably finish them all off for all 50, just to not have to worry about it in the future. But um, it's not, it, it just isn't relevant to have to do that um, other than you know, what you can develop your lead flow for, I guess. Um, so when you start trying to feed nine mouths and you're doing Facebook ads, you're, you have to branch out sometimes just to keep your lead costs down, I guess. So, um, we're, we're doing, we're starting to have some luck with Facebook. I was one of the early Facebook guys. And then around the time that you started coming in, putting stuff online about having luck with Facebook ads, 
it was around the time I was like completely out of Facebook because I was like, oh, Facebook sucks now. So when you started doing it, I was like, well, what the hell is he doing? Like, because <laughs> what I was doing before did not work anymore. And uh, it just it just had it, it evolves so rapidly when you're dealing with an online platform like uh, Facebook just had an update like two days ago to their entire platform. And it's like you're having to kind of relearn where everything is again, you know, so um, but being in control of your own marketing uh, is is huge with an insurance agency. You know, otherwise, like some of these guys come in and they're like. They want to be street or above and they want somebody else to figure all the lead stuff out for them. And I'm like, no, if somebody's figuring all the lead stuff out, you go work in their agency. Um, if you can figure out how to create, you know, the, the revenues or the, uh, the lead source yourself, that's when you're earning the full rip or commission. So um, no. look at that. Somebody says Travers beast mode, beast mode. You know who that is? Who is that? Who is that? I don't know. It just says Facebook user. Well, <laughs> you made that mistake too, guys. You gotta you gotta click StreamYard and share your profile. Streamyard.com so, uh, slash yeah. Facebook. You yeah, comment so. on Steven's shirt, you won't be seen. So you have to don't make that mistake. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you did. I think he guessed it was you though. I did, yeah. He I was did. like, he did. Yeah, he got me. <laughs> yeah. So no. Uh so awesome, buddy. Well, so going into holidays, I'm sure you got big plans coming out of it, no EP. Uh you know, obviously, we, we see so many. This is a good, I feel like, conversation on OEP marketing. So many people are like, oh, you can't market OEP. Man, I think OEP is getting marketed like crazy by everybody. You don't even really have to do anything different. You just market Medicare generally like you would any other time. But so many of these advertisements are getting thrown up on TV and call centers are generating business that it still keeps that buzz going. Do you guys expect to have a big OEP this year? Yeah, man. So while we while we want to stay compliant, right, and not advertise OEP and what it is, is the the idea behind it is consumers don't know, right? They have no idea at the end of the day what AEP is, what OEP is. We keep the marketing consistent, whether it be January or November, mm -hmm. right? And we continue the lead flow. We continue to help people. It's the same thing to us. Um, we just have the opportunity to help a lot more people. Yeah. Yeah, so, the OEP period coming back has been for us so far only helpful because of the way we do business. I imagine for call centers, it presents both opportunity and a lot of issues because we're we're the guys like and when I say call center, like you know, like the go like the big ones like you named earlier, select quarter or go health or somebody. For them it could be just as much of an issue because they enrolled all these people in AEP and then some of the localized groups like us are kind of there and like, oh, you didn't really understand that? Well, here, let yeah. me talk to you. And all of a sudden you can switch. Well, them, the, so. They go to the doctor first of the year and then the provider's telling them, hey, yeah, we're we're not in that network. And now they're all in a frantic. Yeah. And are they going to call the call center back? No, they usually seek out somebody local. So like you said, we usually reap the, the benefits of some of that. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Well, awesome. So OEP is going to kick ass. You're going to break all the records. And you're going to write all the business and you're going to retire at uh, 30. That'd be great. Yeah, that's the goal. 30. I'm <laughs> 28 now. I got, a, you know, a couple months to do it. So 30. Yeah. Now. Well, and you're having a kid soon, right? So Yeah, May, end of May. Yeah. yeah. So, May. Congratulations. You got to retire so you can spend time with your kid. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah. In Florida, man, I'm jealous. I'm going to come work for you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So awesome, buddy. Well, we, we really uh, love having you on here and, and trying to highlight your business. We know you're doing great things. You've been a good partner of ours. Um, we enjoyed having you behind the agency. And uh, if, if are you right now actively adding people to your team or trying to, um, you know, add people in-house or are you also building a downline brokerage or, or are you just focusing on the in-house side? Yeah, we're both, man. So I have some downline agents that are in the field scattered throughout um, the state of Florida. I have a few in Virginia that do some things for us. Um, so always looking to build that side of the business. I think that we bring a lot of value to them. We offer them access to the same marketing, um, the same CRM, everything that the in-house people get. So that's always you know an opportunity. But we're also looking to fill some in-house positions as well for the people that maybe don't have you know, that business owner mindset that you guys deal with, or, you know, I know you build off of Justin that, you know, people want to come in to guaranteed lead flow, some consistent money coming in to where they can show up, make some money and make some sales and, and add on to that. 
So we're trying to replicate the same thing and, and do the same model as, you know, as what some other people have out there. So field is always an opportunity. We love that side of the business. And we also love having people in here in Lakeland. Um, so yes, sir, we are looking to build both sides. Well, that's, that's good. So if you, if you're in that area and you're looking for a home, whether it's, you know, uh, being a, you know, a field agent on your own or looking for an opportunity to work in house, definitely check out, uh, definitely check out Ryan because he's a, a good dude. He's not going to over promise and under deliver. Uh, he's a straight shooter. He has some talent in developing leads and, and, and helping, uh, craft a CRM that'll help take a lot of pressure off of you. And there's just a lot of, there's a lot of big hierarchies out there. And this is a, a you know, something that when we talk to like IFG, for instance, like they try to build epicenters and then edify those people so that people can kind of go under them instead of trying to say, well, who's the biggest, most massive FMO by production and then go into them based on that. Um, we try to encourage people to actually find somebody at least regional that they can trust and maybe come in and do some personal training, even if they're going to be a field agent, uh, because it's really lonely out there when you don't have a community and you don't have people to like legitimately talk to, uh, you know, now if you're going to be a downline agent, to some of these people and you stick around for a couple of years and you're not writing any business, eventually they're just going to get annoyed if you're coming into their office. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, if you can, if you can, put out some business and you just looking for that community, you can have that or Ryan can probably is probably vetting for more potential uh, future in-house agents. So definitely check him out. Ryan, if somebody was trying to get a hold of you and you know, was going to be able to, um, you know, to try to reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, really Facebook, Ryan Travers or our website from a consumer model. We still receive those requests, BP insurance group.com. Um, Instagram is Ryan Travers as well. So any way that, you know, on the social media platforms that you're comfortable with, I'll be able to be found there. Perfect. So, so before we go today, Ryan is in Lakeland, Florida. And like Travis Jenkins just said, Ryan Travers is the man. Uh, Alonzo Hall actually said he writes IUL. IUL, only IUL. That would be really hmm. tough. You got to expand, uh, <laughs> gotta expand, buddy. Yeah, that. That's tough. That's tough. I like, I mean, I get, I like, I, I had bought, sold one to myself, but it's a, it's a, it's a niche market for sure. Super niche. Um, so before we go, if you guys are not subscribed to us, please check out our podcast on all the platforms. If you come into these late, you can go and check them out on Apple podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube, uh, under YouTube on our channel under lives. This one will be under the live section because we live streamed it there. Um, otherwise you can definitely check us out on the Apple podcast platforms. And before we go, we're going to have a word. It's not a word. It's our cool promo video from our sponsor, goguru.pro. So check it out.